Hello again, welcome to Cooper's Commercial Match Angling. I've come down to Halcyon, one of my favourite lakes. Seem to do all my videos on here. But basically what I've come to show you is uh, fishing with maggots in the winter for carp. A lot of people have a preconception that carp obviously want to eat a lot of bait. What I'm going to show you today is how little you can actually feed to catch these fish. So I was on here on a match on Sunday, this same peg, peg 17 on Halcyon. And basically the way this peg plums up is at 13 metres straight out in front, there's a bar and it's basically about four foot deep at the bottom of the bar. And then it comes up onto the bar uh, about three foot deep. And basically with that feature being there, carp like to sit along that feature and huddle in the winter. And also if the sun gets up or the layers of, uh, the layers of water are warmer higher up, they'll sit in that shallow water. So you've got both options, basically. You've got your deep line and you've got your shallow line on the bar. And what happened on uh, Sunday was, started at the bottom of the bar, caught a few silvers, but then when I came onto the shallower water, just feeding maggots really, really negatively, which is what I'm gonna show you today, I've ended up catching 104 pound of carp and winning the match. And that was also the lake record for the match. So I'm hopefully gonna show you them tactics again today uh hopefully catch a few fish right so now let's show you the rigs so as i said i've got two rigs made up today one for bottom of the bar at four foot and one for top of the bar at three foot both rigs are exactly the same float so they're both a 4 by 12 malman speedies which i'll show you in a minute and they both got strung out number 11 so we get a really slow fall because the, the water's clear in the winter the fish obviously watch the bait so we've got to present our bait so the fish can see it fall natural through the water let it settle up and then hopefully get a bite as it settles. The other way is obviously we might as well catch fish through the water if they're in higher layers. So the floats, as I said, are a Malman Speedies. And the reason I like these floats is they've got a 1.5 plastic bristle. The thing with a plastic bristle is it's really, really sensitive. With a hollow bristle, obviously it's very, very buoyant. So the bites aren't as sensitive. With a solid plastic bristle, the bites are a lot more sensitive and also it's 1.5. They've got a rugby type body and they've got a wire stem, which you would think is wrong for fishing through the water. But the reason I like these is in the winter, you get a lot of skim and you get wind. So once these have settled, I can fit, fish them through the water, but once they've settled, they're also very, very stable as well because of the rugby type shape and the wire stem. The reason that these fish well through the water is the wire on these floats is really, really thin, so it's not bottom heavy. It's practically uh, semi-buoyant against the body of the float. So you can actually fish these floats like a carbon stem, where they the follow the shot through the water. They don't go in like a conventional wire stem, where your float settles and then your rig's laid to the side. They actually fish exactly through the water. I don't know whether the camera will pick that up, but you can see I've got uh, eight number 11 shot strung out right through the rig so over four foot and then the other rig is just exactly the same over three foot we're fishing an 015 main line with two number nine back shot because i like to hang onto that shot so that i can slow the float down through the water so you get that really slow fall we've got so like 015 main line and then 013 four inch to a 16 slwg which is still quite a heavy hook. Uh, it's not like your fine F1 maggot hooks because I'm fishing for carp predominantly. If I was fishing for silvers, I would use an F1 maggot. But on this, we're using a, a 16 SLWG to O13 with a chance of obviously catching some carp. That's coupled up with white hydro through a long kit. So we've got plenty of stretch, but nice and soft if we catch a few I catch a few F1s. Uh, Perfect for the car, perfectly balanced with the O13 hook length. We can even drop down to O11 if you wanted to with this elastic. Right, so what I'll show you now is I'll show you uh, my bait tray, because it's very, very simple, just maggots. And I'll also show you uh, plumbing up the peg. So as you can see, my side tray is very simple. I've just got a pint of maggots, mainly reds, just with a few whites. The whites are really there just for a hook bait change and for dobbing. I like to feed red maggots in the winter simply because I believe that they show better in clear water than the whites do. And then in the summer, 
of this white maggots just with a few reds in I've got a few dead maggots and the reason that I use dead maggots I use them on the hook the reason being is how many times have we all hooked fish pulled out of it come in and your maggots turned over your hook simply because the wriggle the tend to sometimes turn over the point of the hook and you lose a fish that can cost you in a match so by using the dead maggots and the way that I do these I hook these through the nose end of the maggot so I'll show you that in a minute basically through the thin end of the maggot because it gives me more hook point to penetrate the fish's mouth less hook pulls less lost fish I've got on my side tray here as well just to show you the pots that I use so basically I use the small guru pots in the winter and get sort of 30 to 40 maggots in them because I'm only actually tapping out five maggots at a time I can obviously get you know up to five six feeds basically with them pots or if I'm feeding 10 or 12 maggots you know I can get three or four feeds so what I do is I modify these slightly so I don't know whether the camera picks that up but basically if you can see the the lids come with like three holes great for sprinkling out micro pellets feeding maggots very very slowly but sometimes hard to get them to drop out so I just modify them slightly and just cut them into like a Mickey Mouse's head if you can see this pot here that just allows the release of the bait so I can turn my pole over basically tip out one two count them hitting the water one two three maggots turn my pot back lay my rig in a couple of times and then if I'm not getting any indications I can then turn the pot back over count again another one two three four five maggots in turn my pot back this basically is, is attraction with the noise of the maggots hitting the water but also it's giving the carp who come in one or two baits to select and obviously my hook bait which matches it if I was feeding something like 15 maggots you find the carp sense that they're being fished for so basically the you know they're very wary of a, a big pile of bait and also if you get a few carp coming your peg because you've fed 15 you tend to get foul lookers as well so by keeping your feed as low as possible at i.e three four five maggots you've got more chance of hooking that fish and less chance of foul hookers another little tip that we've got some of these guru pots when you get them in the pack come with slots in the side and what you see attempt to find is if you're fishing maggots the maggots crawl out of these pots so you might have tipped in one two three maggots and then when you sat waiting for a bite another three or four dropping out making noise on the top of the water bringing the fish up so what I tend to do basically the ones that have got the little holes around the side when I'm fishing from with maggots I'll just use a bit of tape one wrapper tape around that just to stop the holes to block the holes so the maggots can't crawl out then you can actually feed your one two three maggots without any extra ones falling out while you're sitting waiting for bites just a little tip wrap a little bit of tape close the holes up okay guys so now i'm just going to show you how to plumb up so if you notice i'm using a very very small guru plummet i don't want to use the big plummet this one's 10 gram because i don't want to disturb the fish obviously the heavier the plummet the bigger plop it's going to make the more disturbance you're going to get so a small guru plummet see i'm just plumbed up basically to the bottom of the body so the bottom of the body is just on the top of the water that means that when my floats cocked like it is there I've got about an inch of line on the deck I can put that to two inches if it gets windier I need to keep them maggots still on the bottom so to the plummet bottom of the body fishing an inch over depth and then I'm going to push the pole out now to 13 and a bit meters which is just the top of the bar so if you watch I'll just move forward half a meter And can you see now my plummet's on the bottom and see I'm, a, I'm about a foot shallower there so I've got two rigs the rig that I've got on now is the bottom of the bar then I've got another rig that basically will fish on top of the bar which is a foot shallower I've got a far bank marker so if you can see in the distance there's a light there's two two light colored trees like what I'm calling white trees I'm fishing to the right hand side white tree that's my marker so when I feed my bait, I'm always at the correct distance on my pole and I'm also uh, in line with the same marker on the far bank so my feed's always going in the same position. Which is 
that's my line there. I'm on the join of my 13 metre section there. And when I come back to the bottom of the bar, I'm about half a metre shorter. And that's the bottom of the bar. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you how I tap in and count my maggots into the water. Right guys, what I'm showing you here then is the small guru pots that we looked at that I've modified. So I've got Mickey Mouse's head in the end. I've got I've selected the pot with no holes so I don't need the tape on. But obviously some you get one with holes and one without. So if you select the one without brilliant, if not just put a bit of tape around a little tip. And then if you notice the pole pot I fish about an inch, inch and a half back from the end. What I find basically is when I tip the maggots from that position, it ends up under my pole tip and on top of my floor, so as accurate as I can be. So basically you don't want your pole pot six inches back like some people fish, because then you're not feeding accurately. Your float's on the tip of your pole and you're feeding six inches away from where your float is. So I like to have my pot, as I said, an inch and a half back, more accurate. Right, so basically what I'm going to show you now is how I feed my maggots. So I've filled 15 to 20 maggots into my pot. I'm basically going to ship out to my mark, lay my rig, I'm not bothered about that at the moment, get in line with my marker, turn my pot to the side, and then if you watch, I'm going to count the maggots into the water. So I'm going to count the splashes. One, two, three, four, five maggots. Turn my pot back over, lift my rig, Lay my rig to the side because I want it to slowly fall over the top of them maggots. So you can see that slowly falling, holding onto the back shot. And there's a little bite on the way down there. And then let me pull settle up. Not feeding any more bait whatsoever. We're just going to sit and wait for a bite. I'll repeat that process in a minute. See if we get a bite first. Lay that float in again. Hold the back shot, let the float fall around. Settles up. You're surprised how many bites you get after 30 seconds of it settling. Fish have basically watched that bait fall, get to the bottom, and then they nail it. There we go, fish on. Only a small silver fish. Another little tip is when you fuck the fish, you can empty your maggots. So if you were catching really well, you can actually empty the maggots and leave settle the fish down for your next drop in. Repeat now process. Top five maggots in. Two, three, four. They all float. Look at that on the drop.
Look at it, it's like glass now. So a nice tench. I'm gonna have to put that shallow rig on, it's no good. Look at that pull laggy out that and <laughs> it actually pulled the elastic out. Yeah no. That's what I said the shallow. Not on the deck, it's shallow. Right, I'm gonna swap this rig to that shallow rig. Six to ten maggots, twice. Ship our rig out. Flick our rig over. Keep a nice tight line.
There we go, fish on. Thing on. So here we are, end of the day. It's been hard to catch carp today. We've only had uh, a couple of carp and a couple of F1s. But we've had a lovely day with them hard, shallow, and then a few on the deck later on. So we just finished with this last fish. Nice carp, about two pound. So a lovely little carp to finish on. Winter fishing with maggots. Didn't go to plants, we only caught a couple of carp. We've had a lovely day bagging some hide. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe. So there you go, a lovely bag, 60 pound of hide with a couple of carp thrown in. Winter fishing with maggots. Don't forget, scoot them in your net.